In this video, we're learning about cell fractionation and ultracentrifugation. So we'll cover what cell fractionation is and the key steps involved in cell fractionation. Let's start with what cell fractionation is. We use this term to describe a laboratory technique that's used to isolate the different components of a cell, in particular, the organelles. The process involves choosing an organism, like this plant, taking a tissue sample from it, and breaking open all the cells in that tissue sample before then separating all the organelles from those cells based on their size and density. This means that we can study these organelles in more detail, and it's especially useful when we want to look at them using an electron microscope. There are four key steps in cell fractionation. Sample preparation, homogenization, filtration, and ultracentrifugation. So let's take a look at each of these steps in a little bit more detail. First, during the sample preparation stage, we place the tissue sample from our plant in an ice cold, isotonic, buffered solution. This solution helps to protect the organelles during the rest of the fractionation process. It's ice cold to slow down enzyme activity that otherwise might break down the organelles. It's isotonic, which just means it's got the same water potential as the tissue sample, in order to prevent water from moving into or out of the organelles and causing damage. And then lastly, it's buffered in order to maintain a constant pH, and this helps to prevent denaturation of enzymes and other proteins. Next, we carry out homogenization, and this is where we physically break open the cells by disrupting the plasma membrane, and this releases the organelles into the solution. One common method of doing this is by using a blender that grinds up the cells. After that, we need a filtration stage, because we need to remove the larger debris and tissue fragments that we don't want from the solution. This filtration is usually done by passing the solution through gauze that's placed in a filter funnel with a test tube below it. The gauze has gaps that are large enough for the organelles to pass through, so they move into the test tube to form our filtrate, but the larger debris we don't want stays on the filter because it's too big to pass through these gaps. The final step is ultracentrifugation, which is when we separate the organelles based on their density using a machine called a centrifuge that spins the filtrate at various speeds. To start, we centrifuge the filtrate at a fairly low speed, and as the solution spins, the heaviest organelles, which are typically the nuclei, form a pellet at the bottom of the test tube. While all the lighter organelles remain in the liquid solution above the pellet, which we call the supernatant. Next, we transfer the supernatant to a new test tube and spin it at a higher speed so the next heaviest organelles, which in our sample from the plant tissue would be the chloroplasts, form a pellet. We continue this process at even higher speeds this time and increase the speed each time until all the organelles are separated from heaviest to lightest. After the nuclei, the next heaviest organelles will be chloroplasts if we were looking at plant or algal tissue, then the mitochondria, then the lysosomes, then the endoplasmic reticulum, and finally, the ribosomes, which are the lightest. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.